welcome back to my channel today we're going to be doing another forever flowers we're going to be doing a forever flowers on a 90s queen a 90s queen an early 2000s queen she had roles in such movies as life with mickey brink freaky friday and see no evil and she played the titular titular role in the Nickelodeon sitcom Taina Taina So sit back, relax, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Queen Christina Vidal. Christina Vidal, born November 18th, 1981, is an American actress, singer, and producer. She is best known for her roles in films such as Life with Mickey, Brink, Freaky Friday, and see no evil and for her role in the nickelodeon sitcom taina in which she played the title character vidal was born and raised in whitestone an area in queens new york the daughter of manny vidal a tax consultant and businessman and his wife josie a secretary both of puerto rican ancestry she attended the performing arts school of new york when she was 17 she joined a girl group called gemstone along with jade and Crystal Grant. Vidal later moved to Orlando, Florida to proceed with the filming of Taina. Her sisters Lisa and Tanya are also actors and have appeared on TV and in theater. She also has a brother, Christian. Okay, so Vidal's acting career started when one of her teachers told her there was an audition for the movie Life with Mickey, which came out in 1993, starring Michael J. Fox. She auditioned and got the part of Angie Vega and was therefore the first Puerto Rican child actress to play a lead in an American film. Since then, Vidal has appeared in numerous films and television series, with her most notable role being Taina Marie Morales in the Nickelodeon show Taina. The sitcom was at first successful and ran for two seasons until its cancellation in the summer of 2002 because Nickelodeon felt that it only appealed to girls. The next year, she played Maddie in the film Freaky Friday alongside Lindsay Lohan. The same year, she appeared in the short-lived ABC action TV series about police officers called 10-8 Officers on Duty, until she suddenly left after two months on the show. Also in 2003, she guest starred in Sabrina the Teenage Witch as Paris Fate. In 2006, she did an untitled sitcom pilot along with her sisters for ABC, which was executive produced by George Lopez. The show was not picked up, but later that year, she starred in the film See No Evil, along with having a brief stunt in the hit sitcom Girlfriends. In recent times, she made cameos appearances in the movies I Think I'd Love My Wife, Mask of the Ninja, and the internet comedy short love automatically when vidal was in the band gemstone she recorded songs with herself as well as bandmate jade performing vocals a few of these tracks would surface many years later on albums consisting of demos rare tracks and special songs of jade's music box sweet box in 2002 she was briefly signed to mca records and in the and in that time, she was supposed to release her first single, Tropical, and her solo debut album, White, in the summer of 2002, but never did. That same year, she provided guest vocals on the remix of Will Smith's summer hit, Black Suits Coming, Nod Your Head, from the Men in Black 2 soundtrack. She was a part of Lupe Fiasco's first and 15th entertainment. She also recorded a track in the workout CD called By You from Sabrina Bryant of the Cheetah Girls. The song she recorded was Anything Is Possible. She also sang the song Take Me Away in the movie Freaky Friday. She also sang songs in Taina as well. And we're going to talk about that. So, yeah, that's Christina Vidal in a nutshell. Um, how I learned about Christina Vidal is, of course, like everybody else, through Taina and Freaky Friday and Brink. And recently I just watched Brink and it's still incredible by the way. Love her in that movie. Hello, original DCOM. But um, yeah, I love Christina Vidal. 
all the movies, all the shows. She was always representing for all the brown girls, all the people of color. She was rocking it, and I was here for it, okay? We're going to start with, of course, you know, Taina. Because that was my first introduction to your girl, right? So, Taina is an incredible show. And I don't understand why Nickelodeon thought that they had the right to just cancel it. Taina, being the incredible show that it was, was about a girl who was Taino. And if you don't know what Taino is, it is an indigenous population of people from Puerto Rico before the Spaniards came along and before um, African slaves inhabited that land. There was the Taino people and the Arawak people. And those are the indigenous people of Puerto Rico. And they are really amazing and their culture is really great and that was one of the shows that i really liked growing up because it talked about indigenous people even if it only talked about them a little bit they still were represented in the show and i love that um there's an episode of taina i can't even remember the episode of what it's called but i know it was an episode where taina had to go on stage and she had to basically talk about her heritage right and there's this whole monologue that she does where she talks about all three parts of being puerto rico she talks about the indigenous populations of the taino she talks about the african slaves and she talks about the spaniards and how those are all three are connected to make what puerto Ric what makes puerto rico so amazing and i love that and and taina had a lot of like cultural gems that it was bringing out there and it was really represented for the latinas the latinos the latinx however you want to say it she was representing for y'all and i really appreciate that she was representing for people of color she was really representing for urban culture and you know take victorious if you're like over you know younger than like i don't know 20 take victorious that was on tv a few like back in 2012 or whatever and basically take the premise of that show only make the actress be able to sing no offense victoria justice and um make the show more realistic and not as slapsticky a comedy and actually have vocal talent and about something and actually have good guest stars on the show because tiny used to have some banging guest stars let's be real it had joe on there it had shakira on there it had 3lw on there during their prime like it was a good show honestly and sadly it only lasted like a season or a season and a half or something like that i'm pretty sure that more than one season was actually filmed uh like i think three seasons were actually filmed but for some reason nickelodeon decided being nickelodeon that it would take it off the air because it felt that it was too girly and that guys would get nothing out of this show which is so wrong on so many levels honestly like what are you talking about nickelodeon like i don't understand that like at all but i mean that's what they thought so they were like let's just cancel this show now and whatever and i hear there was going to be a whole tie in a movie or like at least a movie special type thing there's going to be a whole third season that they had written out already and then we're about to film it and then they canceled and i was like how are you just going to do my show like that how are you just going to do my show like that i don't really and nickelodeon was doing that a lot at that time like the early late 90s early 2000s they were doing that a lot with a lot of good shows like taina did that and also as told by ginger did that like there are whole seasons of as told by ginger that to this day some of us 90s kids and early 2000s kids who love that show never got to watch because they didn't show them on like actual tv and then it's like crazy and we have to go and like search them on like the internet somewhere and actually watch those episodes now because we couldn't watch them back then which is ridiculous but whatever and um yeah so but Taina was an incredible show i love christina vidal in that i love maritza the actor who played her was great i loved it her best friends were cool like the whole show was just very like urban young girl going to a performing arts school singing dancing the whole thing and it talked about you know the normal stuff like boys and whatever they had a quinceanera episode it was cool i loved it it was a great 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 show great representation for people of color great representation for puerto ricans great representation for latinx and all, the whole thing it was it was wonderful so 
justice for Taina, 100%, baby. 100%. If they do ever do a reboot, I would just live for that, honestly. And shout out to Christina Vidal and her singing voice because she has one and I love it. It's incredible, honestly. So good. So good. I wish she'd put out music to this day. She's incredible, honestly. Should have been bigger than she was in the whole music realm. She was incredible, honestly. And then the next thing I want to talk about, of course, is Brink. Like I said, I just watched Brink recently, and it's incredible still to this day. Uh, Brink came out in 1998. It was a Disney Channel original movie, and it was really, like I said, it was incredible. Honestly, one of the reasons I wanted to move to California when I was a kid, like I still do, honestly, I was really a big fan. And, you know, in 98, 99, like 2000 were like the years of where like Tony Hawk Pro Skater and like Rocket Power and like brink were like really big because skate culture was like huge at that time right and brink was really honing in on that and i really love that movie for that reason because i'm a huge i'm not actually into sports okay i'm not actually into roller skating i wish i could do it but i'm not a big fan but i love the culture around it right like i love the whole sunny california vibe and like all like the skate punk and like ska rock and like all the things that would come out of that time and that you know movement going on during that time and brink was one of those movies that really made me like want to move to california want to live somewhere sunny and want to like talk really cool with like slang and whatever and i loved christina vidal in that because she was represented for all the people of color again, represented for all the Puerto Ricans, even though in that movie, she was not Puerto Rican, she was Peruvian, but she was represented for the Latinx, so that was awesome. And represented for girls, really, and being a fierce, fierce representation of like tomboys and like just being incredible, honestly. We love, we stand, we love, and um, I just love how, and I really love how the whole movie, she's like, I love how you guys always say guy, but I'm a girl. And I'm over here like, exactly. We girls out here, girl. Don't be ashamed to be a girl. You know what I mean? Like, that was funny. That was awesome. And, you know, I just, I love her character in that movie because, like I said, she represents for the people of color, represents for girls, represents for Latinx. And just, you know, she was fierce. She would like kick your butt in any time if you like mess with her like she was just really great and i love her and not any shout out to brink because brink you were wrong you were wrong val was more wrong but you were wrong you were wrong for leaving your friends to go be a part of the pro skating league like that was messed up but val was even more wrong for getting gabriella hurt like that was not nice like throwing them rocks on the ground was like awful like really but like whatever Val is trash Brink has at least some redeeming qualities but Val over there trash but uh one thing I have to say that will always be something to me is soul skating it's a it's what it's about man soul skating there is nothing we can't do I mean really I mean really just just that whole message was so beautiful to me growing up like i love it soul skating man doing things for the fun of it not having to have any money or fame or notoriety attached to it like that's just that's how it is that's how it should be all the time but yeah just shout out to christina vidal for that movie like i can watch that movie on repeat it's actually one of not if not my favorite decom of all time like i i love it like it's it's great like i could watch it every day like it's great um, the next movie I want to talk about, of course, is Freaky Friday. And Freaky Friday, the remake, of course, the 2003 movie, I actually have a long history with that because girl, during that time when Freaky Friday came out, like, I went to see it in the movie theaters with my friend on her birthday. And then it would come on uh, TV, like it would come on either HBO or Disney Channel or something like that. And I remember I recorded it on VHS during that time because it came out in 2003, right? So that's like, you know, still VHS because, you know, we had DVDs, but we couldn't like record on, like we could record on them, but like I didn't have that technology at that time and I'm only like 12, so whatever. But between 12 and 13 and 14, 
I watched that movie like it was my like how to be rocker 101 bible or something I don't even know what I was doing like literally like there were movies back then that were like not even really rocker like at all like we're totally poser movies but like me being like i don't know anything about this world but all my friends are into this like let me pretend to be into it would watch that movie on repeat and like try to copy her outfits Lindsay lohan's outfits in that movie i actually tried to be christina vidal for like basically all of middle school and high school like i was just trying to be that brown girl who's into like alternative stuff and like into rock and roll and like really like in a band and like has cool hair and like whatever like i just tried to be christina vidal honestly like being black and indigenous i just tried to be christina vidal like that was basically me i was just like let me just try to be christina vidal in freaky friday like the whole time and i was like i just i'm failing miserably but it is what it is but uh, actually i feel like i'm more christina vidal in freaky friday now than i was even back then but whatever but basically she killed it in that movie sang the crap out of take me away love that song honestly such a gem i listen to that song all the time uh, i recently watched this movie back and i just her and that other chick who was like all wearing black all the time black and white or whatever great we love it we stand and it was a whole vibe you know like because that was like right when emo culture was like becoming super mainstream at that time too so like that was really big so that's probably why they had that be the culture of that movie because we all know Lindsay lohan and christina vidal are not in that in any way that way at all because christina vidal you know was singing r&b back in taina days but now she's all into the rock stuff but that was cute i liked it it was like a good vibe and like i don't know i just have a really soft spot for that movie because it's like one of my favorites so Shout out to Christina Vidal for representing all the brown girls who were like emo and into rock and roll and probably were like made fun of in their household because they liked white stuff even though you guys are the failures because black and brown people were the people who invented rock and roll in the first place so get out of town. Okay? But anyways, Freaky Friday is a good movie and that's just what it is. But um yeah i didn't really know that much more about christina vidal and what she was doing after freaky friday i guess that was like the last time i really saw her in like a like a more leading role i guess i don't know she just kind of went off my radar for a while and then a couple years ago i discovered her on instagram and it's been the best because i love discovering all of my 90s and early 2000s faves on instagram and like following them and realizing that they are now married most of them and have beautiful children um she's married yes and she has a beautiful daughter and it's the cutest thing ever oh my gosh go follow her on instagram please go search christina vidal on instagram you will not be disappointed i promise you and there's actually on her instagram if you search it there's a cover that she did of the she went back to new york and she did the taina theme song and it's so good like i recommend high key like go watch that you can probably find it on youtube too like whatever go type that in honestly it's great um but yeah so christina vidal you are incredible you are a great mom you are a great actress and a great singer and i just love you and i'm so glad that you were able to represent all of the brown girls latinx latinas puerto ricans people of color women in all of your movies you were strong you were beautiful and you had a voice on you and i love it and i love the roles that you played you really did take a whole piece of my heart and you always will have it because i could rewatch all of your movies and all of your tv shows and everything from the 90s and early 2000s to this day and i will still love it and it will be still incredible and you're just a queen honey you are a queen and if you ever listen to this i just wanted you to know that you are amazing and you have my heart i mean you really do like taina incredible vicky friday amazing like bring everything like come on
I just have I can't praise you enough like honestly you are amazing uh amazing everything about you is amazing so we're gonna just rattle off a few of the things that Christina Vidal has been in over her career and some of the things that she's in now so for television roles in 1994 she was in the Cosby Mysteries in 1995 she was in the Kamosh in 1997 she was in the FX the series in 1997 to 1998 she was in Nick Ferno licensed teacher in 1998 she was in Brink in 1999 she was in Providence in 1999 she was also in an episode of Touched by an Angel in 2001 2002 she was in taina in 2003 she was in hotel in 2003 she was also in sabrina the teenage witch in 2003 to 2004 she was in 10 8 officers on duty in 2004 she was in beck and call in 2004 she was in the second time around in 2005 she was in clubhouse in 2006 she was in girlfriends in 2007 she was in an episode of er in 2008 she was in play or be played in 2008, she was also in The Mask of the Ninja. In 2009, she was in an episode of Monk. In 2010, she was in House. In 2010, she was also in The Deep End. In 2010, she was in Plain Sight. In 2010, she was in The Castle. In 2011, she was in Things We Do for Love. In 2011, she was also in Fairly Legal. In 2004, she was in Stalker. In 2015, she was in Being Mary Jane. In 2015, she was also in The Player. In 2015, she was also in Major Crimes. In 2015 to 16, she was in Code Black. In 2016, she was in Limitless. In 2016, she was also in Blue Bloods. In 2017, she was in Training Day. In 2018, she was in Sneaky Pete. In 2019, she was in Grand Hotel. And in 2020, she will be in United We Fall. And some of the movies that she has been in is 1993, she was in Life with Mickey. To the 1995, she was in Welcome to the Dollhouse. In 2000, she was in Details. In 2003, she was in Chasing Poppy. In 2003, she was also in Freaky Friday. In 2005, she was in The Mosquito. In 2006, she was in See No Evil. 2007, she was in I Think I Love My Wife. So, yeah. She's been in a lot of things, even if they were just cameo roles and stuff like that. She has been in a lot of great stuff. So I definitely recommend checking her out at Christina M. Vidal on Instagram. And just checking out her life and checking out her cute little daughter and everything. She's just living it up, being incredible, living the best life, okay? Living the best life. And, um, yeah. This is just a uh, Forever Flowers on the good sis, Christina Vidal. Until next time, peace and blessings.